Hey guys, welcome back to Maxplain Dawn of War Unification. This is going to be the last guide for the current patch of Unification, but it's more or less a general guide for Dawn of War, even vanilla. And yeah, it is a collection of tips that immediately improve your gameplay in Dawn of War. <laughs> Excuse me, this clickbaity uh, kind of uh, title, but it is just that. It's some, some tips that if you uh, keep them in mind will uh, improve your gameplay quite a lot if you just use them. It's not uh, always like big micro things or macro things you have to know. It's more or less some basics that uh, you should have in mind when playing Dawn of War that will help you quite a lot uh, versus AI and also versus um, PvP. This uh, is the intention of this guide because I see a lot of people asking in the Dawn of War Unification uh, War Room about uh, how to defeat the AI even uh, sometimes on the easier difficulty. So um, I thought maybe making a video showing it off is better than uh, having just a list with, uh, I don't know, some tips. But uh, I have a list that I will link here as well. It is in my drive as the usual. Um, I may or may not add a few tips down the line that I not mention here. So it's uh, that I maybe think about after doing this video. So yeah, check check out this this uh, Google document to see if there are more tips. But uh, I will not talk in this this <laughs> um, screen here for long. We I have read a replay where I, uh, not a replay a safe game where I show you some things off and then I want to finish uh, all this guide. Um, off with a example of me playing versus the AI. So you see some of the tips in action right away. So, but before we um, go there, I have a safe game where I will talk through all the tips. Okay, and here we are. Before I go into the first tips, I should state that this um, first tips that are around economy are based on the standard settings. So standard income, standard starting resources, no quick start, no increased resource generation, nothing. So as I said, the first tips will be around the economy. Um, there will be a little number crunchy, but I hope you will uh, <laughs> don't mind it too much. The first tip I have is that you should build listening posts as soon as you have uh, captured a strategic point, but you should not upgrade all of them. For example, before going to a tier two, you should only uh, upgrade about two or so. So building a listing post is really nice. It doesn't cost you a whole lot. For Space Marine, it is 100 requisition, which is true for the most factions, and you get a gift back of 50 requisition. So it's a net cost of 50 requisition. Um, uh, building a listing post increases your um, requisition rate from the basic six to a plus 12, so, so you get plus six. This six, number six, uh, means that you get plus six requisition over the course of 10 seconds, uh, which with which we can calculate after which time this um, building this listing post has paid off. And the time is about 30, uh, 83 seconds, so it's about one, I, I will talk about minutes so you can uh, see it better. It's about uh, one and a half minutes, a little less than one and a half minutes. This uh, listening post has paid off. Of course, you have some additional benefits that the enemy cannot just decap and whatnot. It's, uh, but uh, I will only talk about uh, economy, not about defensive um, bonuses. Upgrading a listening post costs normally 100 requisition and 75 power. We put it just, uh, together in a pool, so it costs uh, uh, resource-wise 175 uh, resources and increases the uh, requisition rate from 12 to 18, so another six, but you pay more, so it pays off only after about five minutes, a little less than five minutes, this will pay off. So that's uh, one reason why you should not upgrade all of your listing posts, because the resources you put in there basically do nothing for five minutes before you finally get some resources back. And it is even even worse uh, when you think about the third upgrade, the, the heavily fortified position in this case. Um, they, the costs sometimes uh, vary a bit, so I have calculated this with a cost of 250 requisition and 150 power. Um, so this is 400 resources only to increase the uh, requisition rate again only by plus six. 
so you need to wait 11 minutes before the upgraded second upgrade will pay off in resources so in normal one-on-one -on -one pvp you will never ever see upgraded listening post lp2 maybe for tau because they get a really good rail gun on top of their listening post and don't have turrets but still um, resource wise an lp3 and and the second upgrade for listening post is never a good idea if you compare that to building, let's say, a second HQ, costs about 850 rec uh, um, resources, 70 requisition, 150 power. I mean, it increases the more HQs you, you get. So if I place this, you see this, the second one will uh, cost more. But an HQ gives you plus 20 requisition and does not decay as well. So um, if you calculate that, an HQ will uh, pay for itself after about seven minutes. So Building a second HQ is economically speaking better than upgrading an LP um, listing post uh, the second time. So just keep that in mind. Upgrading a listing post the second time is more of a defensive measure and not economy based measure. That's listening posts out of the way. Let's talk about generators. At the start of a game you should either build one or basic no. Uh, generator to start with. For most openers you don't need a lot of power and um, all the money you put into generators will lead to having less squads on the field. Having a, a weaker army means that the enemy can overcome your force and capture more of the map than you. Having more squads also means that you can capture the map more quickly, gaining more resources that way and later building power generators when you need the power to tech up to um, yeah to tech up basically in tier one the only uh, power you need is for getting to tier 1.5 or upgrading some listening posts but still um, maximum one plasma generator no more um, I have also added um, uh, I have also calculated how much time it takes to for generator to pay off and a bigger generator. Um, more of a general uh, advance uh, advice you can get more gens once you are in tier one uh, tier two and tier three so um, you can pay for the vehicles and whatnot but in the beginning you only need one and then before tacking up you need maybe one or two additionally um, depending on how much uh, LP once uh, you upgrade okay but the time for a gen general uh, as a standard generator I calculated with a cost of 150 requisition which is a medium value um, it gives you 50 power back once it's built, so it's a net cost of 100 and it gives you uh, 10 power. It, it decays a bit, so it starts off with 10 power per second. So um, 10 power per 10 seconds, so it pays off after 1.7 minutes, so that's okay. A bigger generator is really I interesting. It costs about 250, 275 requisition, gives you plus 40, which is immense. So it pays off after 44 seconds, not even a minute, and this one pays off. So building one um, is highly advised, even though you might build them in a uh, not very defensible position, but if you can hold it for a minute, <laughs> you already have your money back, you could say, because you get a big uh, payback of 100 power once you build it. So it's a net cost of 175. Uh, resources with similar how to um, upgrade a listening post once so building a thermoplasma generator is highly advised if you have the resources for it the last thing the resource upgrades in tier 2 and tier 3 are very good to do um, you have two tiers of upgrades for power uh, requisition and two tiers of upgrades for power um, I also calculated the uh, payoff for the different um, upgrades for the upgrades you have to make an guess on how much uh, requisition income you already have because it's a percentage based increase it increased the, the requisition increase is 15% for the first upgrade so I calculated it if, as if you have like uh, two upgraded listing posts three standard um, listing posts one critical location one H HQ giving you 80 a 98 requisition and if you research that you get then 113 requisition and that pays off after 3.7 minutes or so about uh, less than four minutes which is 
good. It's a better payoff time than upgrading a listening post once. The second requisition upgrade um, costs you a little more. On the power side, it's uh, 100 requisition and 350 power, which is uh, considerably more, but also provides a plus 20% increase, which um, kind of pays off itself in the similar time space about uh, 3.3 minutes. The power upgrades are better in that sense. If you um, you normally build more gens before you upgrade uh, your power income because you get uh, the power um, pay back from your gens and they pay off more quickly than getting the upgrade. Getting the upgrade after you have six generators will um, provide you with 33% increased power, which uh, pays off in more or less exactly two minutes. If compared it to a gen, it um, pays off in 1.7 minutes. So building a gen is uh, most of the time or all, all the time better than getting the upgrade. The second power upgrade will increase the power income by 20%, not as much as the first one, and will pay off in uh, 3.7 minutes. So the first one is highly advised, the second one is, depending on your strategy, uh, not always worth it. So that's all the number crunching economy tips out of the way. Now we I have some combat um, tips for you, how to improve your combat um, experience. The first one, is easy and hard at the same time. Make use of stances. Stances uh, are these two uh, buttons here. Um, there are five different stances. We start off with the first one, hold ground. Hold ground means that the unit will attack everything that is in vicinity and will follow it about 30, I think, uh, distance. So it will follow the unit until here and when the, then it will stop um, pursuing and I think even uh, running back to its original position. Um, this is mostly advised for melee squads because you want your melee squads to engage the enemy and not just stand back. Let's say the force commander is my, my melee squad, I want to have him engaged. This also helps if you right click on an enemy squad that he keeps engaged um, even if the enemy runs away. So I say this um, for let's say uh, um, low to mediocre player strength, I would all my melee put all my melee squads into hold ground stance. The second stance you can have is the stand ground stance. It sounds pretty similar, but it's not the same. Stand ground is basically attack everything uh, you can do um, that enters your acro zone, you could say, um, but not follow it. So this is mostly uh, used for all your different ranged units because you want to have your ranged units at an exact position and do not want to run them into the enemy, especially if they have heavy weapons that need to set up so that they not uh, make one step or two and then have to reset up the heavy bolter or something because they want to follow the unit a little bit. So all your ranged squads should be at a stand ground stance. On higher player, um, Strengths, I would recommend also putting your melee squads in the hold ground because you have the APM to uh, constantly micro them to stay into melee. But that's player preference. Some uh, want to put their uh, melee squads always into hold ground. Or the next um, one, um, okay, this is one I will explain quickly. Burn sense, that's basically that the unit will prefer buildings, not really used at all. Cease fire um, will make it so that the unit will not attack, nor rather ranged, nor melee. Uh, this is mostly useful for infiltrated capping units like the stealth suits, for example. You can put them right next to enemy listing posts and have them uh, or, or uh, squatted caps a point and have cease fire so the enemy does not know that you are there. If you have not ceased fire on yet, you will detect the enemy so he will notice that there is a a unit around and will uh, can do something against it. If you have cease fire, you can then uh, quickly decap the point, for example, without the enemy having prepared anything for that. And the last one is the attack stance. That is basically the same as the hold ground stance, but the unit will follow the enemy indefinitely. Some people prefer that over the um, hold ground stance uh, for your melee squads. You can do that as well. And this is your melee and ranged. Uh, uh, this is your general stances and then you have also ranged and melee stance. That's basically if you um, have an aggressive stance like the hold, um, hold ground or attack stance, they will run into melee or run into ranged fire. And if you right click on an enemy squad, they will um, use that 
uh, weaponry ranged or melee depending on the stance. This has multiple usages because normally you would say oh, okay I put all my ranged units in ranged stance and all my melee units in melee stance but there are also some some uh, scenarios where you want to use your force commander for example in ranged or your space marines in melee. These scenarios could be that you have Tau fire warriors here and you have more squ uh, marine squads than there are fire warriors so you want to have put one uh, marine into melee so they can tie up the fire warriors and and the other ones can shoot at it, so they don't receive the full damage of the Fire Warriors. The second one is um, very good in the early game. Of the, all the commanders have good range damage as well, so you can try to um, snipe down enemy workers or capper units with your ranged fire, because uh, you don't have to engage into melee and um, have this range, so you can snipe them when they try to run away, for example. One last tip about stances that you can set up the stance uh, unit will uh, pop out or start with in the building tab as well. For every building you have such an uh, overlay here where you can set up the stance the unit uh, has when start uh, when on the field. There are some units that uh, overcome this rule, but um, some most of them uh, follow this rule. Okay, that's stances out of the way. Let's talk about cover. You should always make use uh, of cover if you can. This map isn't the best to show that off, but you see when you are in the vicinity of cover, which is most of the times like a crater or something on the ground, um, it shows light cover or heavy cover or negative cover. Let's talk about the different cover um, covers you can have. Not music, but you know, light cover. It is shown by this little uh, icon here. Some of the modded factions have different icons, but in What's general it's one of this shield icon here. A light cover um, lets your units take 25% less range damage. This is only for infantry. The vehicles will still take 100% range damage. Your movement speed is reduced by 10% and your morale regeneration is increased by 50% 50, 50 <coughs> which is quite a lot. So standing in, in uh, cover gives you a big benefit uh, over not standing in cover. And it gets uh, even better if you stand in heavy cover. You only take 50% range damage. Uh, even vehicles are affected by it, but they take only 25% less range damage. And your movement speed is a little more uh, decreased by 25%, but you get plus 100% morale regeneration. So really really nice to stand in heavy cover the opposite of that is negative cover which is for example this little uh, green pond here you see it uh, with the icon here that this uh, shield is crossed and negative cover has the following effects you take plus 10 percent range damage but the movement speed is decreased by 20 percent so it's only negative uh, effects but the, ne the, the negative effects aren't as big as the positives for a um, cover. So you can move through negative cover, you only take plus 10% range damage uh, instead of like standing into uh, light cover you take 20%, 25% less range damage. So um, it is a little penalty but not as much. And there's one last thing that uh, isn't really considered cover but also has some benefits is staying into melee combat. I can't show it here because I have the AI disabled. But if you stand, stay in melee combat, let's say these space marines are fighting some towers, tower warriors here. <coughs> the, or some melee dedicated squad uh, is in melee. Being in melee means that you take about 25, 22.5% less range damage. So being into melee protects you against ranged attacks. And now it's the big part, minus 19 90% ranged morale damage. So standing, staying in melee will uh, basically negate any morale damage you take from any ranged attacks. So you stay in melee and being attacked by a flamer doesn't matter really because you are in melee and be a boss. <laughs> okay, that's about the different covers. That's one tip that can be very helpful and something I really uh, struggled uh, when I played myself is how to move your troops precise. Because if you have a big blob of unit and move it somewhere, they will form some sort of irregular pattern here. You don't really want to have them here. You want a force commander at the front and these units sometimes even like move like this and only one unit can shoot. Um, 
the best way to move squats is it is a little micro heavy but move them one at a time so you can move them exactly and closer together even if you want to and then if you want to inch them forward um, to the enemy for example you are just out of range you want to attack a little more then you click far away so that they don't spread out as much and then you use this stop command which is the default hotkey Q so you move them and press Q move them and press Q move them and press Q so you can adjust them just a little bit just a little bit for and back just just a little bit so you have just enough uh, range you want to have so that's a how how about moving so uh, to recapitulate that only move one squat and then the next one and then you want to uh, i mean you can also move both and all and then when they're all in the right spot you press q and then they stand there um q is also if you um have your fingers on the left side of the of the um keyboard which is preferred for uh, several reasons i will show later um you really close to the q button okay that's the tip about moving and the next tip is that you should make use uh, of control groups control groups if you don't know how to use them you select a unit for example this force commander press control and one and then you see here little one here so whenever i, I have something um, um something different selected i can press one and i have the force commander and i also can double tap one to jump to his position so I'm busy micro my base and see him. Oh, my first commander is attacked here. I, I quickly want to jump to him. I press double one. Um, is our shield. Using this can uh, be useful for several reasons. If you, for example, um, have your armory on a hotkey, let's say six, you can micro your units and, and quickly um, in the fight you want. Oh, I want to have uh, the bionics so I can quickly Press six in the full in the field without needing to pull my camera back to uh, the armory. Or if you have uh, put it on uh, a building here, let's say the the chapel barracks, I want to do some more space marines while I'm still fighting. I can press five and queue up a space marine without use uh, need to pull back my camera to my base. The basic usage of that with, with what you should start is put some units that have similar roles into one group. For example. Uh, I put all my melee units into one, which is most of the time my force commander of my melee um, commander. And then I put my ranged troops in two, so I can have them here and here, one and two, one and two, really quickly. Um, yeah, and advanced one would be that you put your certain buildings into unit groups, as I stated, like your, your armory that you can tech uh, really fast, or your HQ, then you can queue up the tech to the next level really fast but something i use and i recommend as well is putting uh, units uh, buildings that can deep strike i usually do it in the five and then you can quickly deep strike using either this this button here or using the e button to quickly deep strike without need to uh, turn to your base you even have them now on five and can start producing more units to deep strike later okay that's uh, control groups the next tip is a more obscure one that you wouldn't have uh, thought about i think is if you see here this range of this listening post or this turret you think it will attack everything that is in range not true <coughs> it will attack everything that is in his acro you could say range but if if as um let's say this squad would be an enemy squad it will not attack this but um it can be possible that if you um, press attack here which is the A button um, you will be able to attack this because uh, the range here is more or less not true or let's see it is in range but it does not attack then you can force it to attack this has uh, the benefit of you having more range but other than that you should always uh, focus your listening posts and turrets when they are attacked because the enemy normally or better players will enter the aqua range of a turret or listening post with let's say a commander or a vehicle which takes less damage from the heavy bolters here so you want to readjust it and make it to fight uh, kill some infantry because infantry is more easily killed by heavy bolters um yeah so you should focus the according uh, squad if this is a heavy missile turret you want to force it to attack uh, vehicles of course 
Okay, the last tip is um, the last, the let's say, combat tip is um, I, also something I cannot show here is that you do not want to fight with broken morale. You, you know w probably what broken morale is. If your morale bar is at zero, the uh, unit becomes broken, has these uh, red circles and has some negative, um, negative, um, some debuffs. The debuffs are that it has minus 80% accuracy in melee and ranged but its movement speed is increased by 20%. So in general, you want to have your range squads that are broken to move back until their morale is restored and then fight. Because just standing there, getting more hits and your morale stays down will not benefit you at all. You only deal about 20% of your damage output. So it's better to move away, regain your morale and then engage again. For melee squads, it can be beneficial to stay in melee because you have the increased movement speed. So if you want to tie up squads, it can sometimes even be beneficial, but don't expect to, uh, don't expect to deal any damage uh, while still fighting when broken morale. You, even in melee, you will deal uh, only 20% of your damage. Okay, this is the combat out of the way. Now we will have the last group of tips that is um, what you should you have in mind or what should you do when you start a match because starting the, the, the starting time of a match is the most important everything you do will um, snowball against you or uh, for your in your way you could say so if you're starting a game or even before starting a game let's start before starting a game you want to have in mind what is your build order a build order means what units and buildings am i building from the start and in what order um, a general build order for most factions, you could say, is that you start, once you start a match, by building your barracks building or whatever it is, it is your barracks and uh, one generator maybe, if, if needed, or uh, no generators. And some factions also ben have a uh, benefit for building one turret. Don't build like five turrets, they will de delay your tech by quite a bit because they cost power. But let's say Imperial Guard can place one offensive uh, or defensive turret to uh, help them secure their early game. But that depends on the faction or matchup. So in general, you want to build your barracks and maybe a generator. From the general units you want to start off, depending on the map size, you want to have two to three uh, capping units, which is units you normally can build from your HQ and one additional worker. So you have then two workers and two to three capping units. And then you want to have either two combat squads, which for Space Marines would be two Space Marine squads, or one combat squad and one commander, would be one Space Marine and one commander. Uh, I, for the most part, I would recommend building the squad first because the building time for a squad is most of the times lower than the building time for a commander. And with this combat squad, you can still cap a point while you wait for your commander to appear. Once you have some, some map control and some points on, on the, under your control and have some spare resources, you can add up to two, let's say one to two more combat squads, be it Space Marines or Assault Marines, get one to two generators and then go to tier two. That will give you a good tier two timing, which is uh, the in my several build orders I have in my drive is what I most of the time call standard. Um, that said, I have a lot of different build orders in my drive. So if you want to uh, look what your faction, your preferred faction can do at the start, you can look up uh, in my Google Drive. My Google Drive is linked in the descriptions always. And there's one folder build orders. There you find build orders for all the factions of the unification mod. So this is build orders. So you want to have a build order in mind when you start a match. The second one you want to have in, in, in mind is a uh, capping order. The, that's about that um, capping order means what points you cap and in what order. There is some thought about it because um, if you choose to cap the points near your base, like this one uh, in this map, this is a weird map for that, but let's say these two are really um, close to your base. If you cap, cap them first and build a listing post, you can build a listing post on them quicker, so we get a more income quicker. But that leaves the more outer points, like this one, to be contested by the enemy. So you may have troubles um, holding this one. So it can be beneficial to take uh, the outer ones first and then go back and cap the closer ones to your base. 
This leaves the base uh, defenseless because you don't have a listening post that you can upgrade here um, to protect your generators, for example. So um, it all has some pros and cons, but uh, lets you. Um, but this lets you uh, have this point and potentially get uh, let you get more income in the long run. Um, there are some maps where there are very crucial points you want to have. Uh, for this map, I would say this one is a crucial point because it's close to the enemy and protects this uh, path through the water. Um, but there are some maps that's there where you just want to have the um, the um, points as quickly you can get so your economy starts as fast as you can. The next tip, once you actually starting the game, so the loading screen is over, the game starts, what do you want to do? You want to build your first building and squad as soon as you can. Yes. You always start a game, let's um, delete all of this quickly. You always start the game with your um, builder selected. So the first one you want to do is immediately build a building. Uh, for example, for Space Marines, you can use the hotkeys. Hotkeys are very helpful. It's B for build, so you get in the building menu, and for the barracks, it's C, so it's really close together. So you start the game, it is ready loading, you press B, C, and bam, you drop the travel barracks. Once this is dropped down, you immediately then want to select your HQ and start your first capper, for example, your scout marine. And after you started your first capper, you has, have enough time to do everything else. Let's say um, queue up the generator you want to build and uh, queue up a second scout marine and a builder. Then you have time for that. But the first things you want to do is I try to do it uh, quickly one more time. So the, the game is loaded. So I want to quickly build a um, terror barracks and a scout marine. If you are good, you can even use hotkeys for the first um, uh, buildings and units here. Once, yes, as I said, once you have your first uh, things done, you can then queue up more more stuff later. So the next tip is uh, also something that uh, a lot of people seem to do wrong. It is that in the beginning, when you start a game, you do not reinforce the squads to the maximum. There are several reasons for that. A, if you reinforce a capping units like scouts, they, they don't do much. They, they don't do a lot of damage and they don't get a lot of benefits for spending the resources on them if you don't plan to use them in the combat. Secondly, the resources you put in um, reinforcing a squad means that you cannot either cannot build listening posts because you have all the, the, the requisition in the units which will uh, cripple your economy by quite a bit and secondly um, you don't really need the fighting squads in the early game that much. You before you want to fight, uh, it's always a big time before you uh, move over the uh, over the field. So don't reinforce them right away. There are even more reasons why um, I have prepared this here. This is the same model count. It's uh, about the same cost. Um, this costs 190 plus 200. So this is a little uh, more expensive than this one uh, even. So having two squads um, of four is better than having one squad of five, uh, eight. Why is that? If you have the enemy engaging with a melee squad and you have only one squad, you need to run away and cannot shoot. If the enemy and you, if you have two squads and the enemy engage you with a melee squad, you can move one back while the other fighters fi uh, fires and then if he changes targets, you micro this back and they can fire. So you always have 50% of your units firing instead of zero. This is called kiting. The other way around, it's always uh, also better to have more melee squads uh, than one uh, big melee squad because you can tie up more range squads. So if you face two range squads and you have two melee squads, you are fine out. You just right click on the one, right click on the next and you have both uh, to run away. But if you only have one squad, it will happen what I stated here. They will kite back and shoot with the other squad. There are even more benefits of having uh, more um, more squads than having one. Let's see heavy weapons. Heavy weapons are limited by amount. They start off with two, but later can get up to four, but stay at that. So if you want to have heavy bolters, a lot of heavy bolters, it is better to have two squads because they can have a total of four heavy bolters, whereas this squad only can have two. So we'll have double the amounts of heavy weapons that will be more beneficial than having your standard um, 
squad out. And also, squad leaders. Most squads are... Oh, now I have not built it. Please build it quickly. If you want to have squad leaders. Because squad leaders are normally better and more cost efficient than your standard models. So you want always to have squad leaders around. Having more squads means you can have more squad leaders as well. And the squad leaders not only have better stats in terms of health and damage output, they most, for most factions, also uh, have the benefit of taking um, upgraded weapons from your armory. Let's say I have researched plasma pistols, so my commander gets a plasma pistol. But this is also true for my uh, sergeant. So I will have two sergeants with two plasma pistols rather than only having one sergeant with plasma pistols. So my damage output in these squads is way higher. Also my survivability is higher because I have uh, two sergeants which have more health and even I think a better armor class than standard space marines. So that's why you should normally get up as much squads as you can before reinforcing them all. There are some reasons you want to reinforce them because you, uh, there's a fight upcoming so you can reinforce them on the field which is all the time better than having like a fully reinforced squad and you have uh, more resources and send oh I need more units so I go back to my base and build another space wing squad that will start at my base and need to run the whole map before fighting it's better to have two squads that you can reinforce on the field so the new models will be right at the front where you want them to have so you have more units and more models more damage more health on the field where you want it okay that's set of the way the other way is the next tip is make use of shift commands to queue up commands. Shift is basically, if you hold shift, you can tie, um, queue up multiple commands. Let's say movement. Move here, then move here. I hold shift for that. So it moves, the mod moves here. And then once it's there, it moves over there. So this is what a shift command is. How can you use that? For your capping in the beginning, you can use it to right click on this point and then shift click to the next point to the next point to the next point and so on and so forth so the scout marines in this case will run to the next point immediately so you don't have to micro them uh, when the message pops up oh you have captured a strategic point then you need to go over there and right click them so they will do it uh, right away uh, what you also can do is um, queue up construction of buildings as i showed you here if you have a barracks building and then you want to build a uh, plasma generator you build say build plasma generator and then you hold shift and then the servitor will once he has built that move to here the next one that you can use it for which is also very nice is if you have a servitor following your cappers with a building listening post you say build listening post and then you hold shift click that he after that moves to the next position so he will wait here and be ready here for your commands to build the next listening post that will uh, make your life easier shift commands in general are something that makes your life easier you also can shift uh, let's go here and then then a click um, so it will after that will uh, attack move over there you can also tie um, use that for assault marines that they um, jump after capping a squad uh, capping a point and whatnot Okay, so this is about how you use commands the right way, shift commands. The next two are more, let's say, or the next one is more of a mindset you could, uh, you should have when fighting, is that you always want to take the initiative. This is a general strategic principle. You don't want to, if, if you hold back in your base, for example, and play defensive, the enemy always has the first step, so you, you need to react. So everything they do, you need to react to. If you don't react, you get uh, uh, probably um, uh, 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 malus for that. Because if you don't react them for them attacking your listening posts, they will kill your listening posts, you get less eco. If you don't react them to uh, being over there, then they will kill your whole army. So staying always one foot behind. Having the initiative is therefore beneficial. So your enemy needs to react. So if he does not react to what you um, face them, make them face, they will uh, lose out. But you don't have the possibility if you just stay back in your base. Um, there are even several things you can do if you are not able 
to uh, win a direct fight. If you're s the enemy is a little has a bit, um, better armor than you and uh, makes you um, makes you unable to leave your base, you can still do uh, several things. For example, you can scout around the map and think about what listening posts are undefended and can I attack them. If they are undefended, you can attack them, and even then, if the enemy responses to defend them, just move back. So you made your enemy move to defend instead of attacking your base. So this is always uh, nice. Uh, the best part would be if they kill a listening post and then uh, decap the point, for example. Other thing you can do is if you have some uh, jump troops or some fast moving troops, you can try to move to the enemy base and kill some generators. Sometimes generators aren't placed right directly onto a listening post. They are just over there standing undefended. You can attack them. And as I said before, then the enemy needs to react to that or it will lose the generator. So it's uh, at all times the enemy must react to that. The last one you can do, which is mostly early game thing, is that you use jump troops or uh, commanders to find enemy workers and snipe them or capping units even. So you can use your force commander or your, let's say, assault marines, even range stuns, uh, as I explained before, to kill enemy workers. Killing enemy workers is not the biggest economical um, problem. It's not that much uh, you have to pay for them, but if you kill them, they will not be able to build a listening post that fast. So you will need to build a new one and then he needs to move the whole time over there, not building the listening post. A, not giving the enemy a requ uh, requisition for the listening post, and B, maybe giving it enough time to kill that listening post before it is built. So try to uh, think of that three possibilities um, when you are in the position that you think you cannot do anything. Think about them. The last one is to prevent such things. It is um, position your tech and eco buildings safely. Um, it is sometimes um, a little, how should I say, overwhelming and you're fighting and think, oh, I need generators, where's my builder? It's here, okay, now place two generators here. The generators here out on the front, it, it's not really the front, but let's say I po position them here. That is a really bad position for your generators and armory because when the enemy attacks, this is the first thing the enemy will uh, can destroy. And then you have one generator less and your armory is uh, dead, so you need to rebuild it. It is better to have them either at the back of your base, which can be dangerous if the enemy has jump troops because then they are undefended again. But the best way would to put it uh, under uh, upgraded listening posts. For example, this listening post here. Um, I would upgrade only once and then I, you could put in some generators here. It can be beneficial to space out your generators to uh, several listening posts so that a big attack to one listening post does not kill your whole gens. But in general, you want to have them uh, in a safe position. Okay, that's all the starting tips I have for now. Let's think if I have something else. Yeah, that's something about, about combat or about uh, if you attack an enemy LP and def uh, kill it, always make sure to decap this point. Capping a point takes longer than decapping a point by, uh, I think, about two times longer. I'm not really sure about the times, but make sure to decap it so the enemy cannot just build another listening post over it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The last one I have here is a list of useful hotkeys you can do. There are everything you can do. Every unit building has a hotkey, but um, some are general for all factions. The first one, which you probably know or should know, is attack move. If you move your squads with right click, you're just moving them and they will not attack enemies other than, let's say, uh, firing on the move, which generally has less accuracy and some weapons cannot fire it on the move. So you want uh, use A and then left click. So they will move to here and if they find an enemy squad, they will engage it. That's useful to have your squads not run into enemy firing lines because uh, yeah, they will stop and fire back. Normally you want to always uh, move your troops around with a move. The second one is jump. So you see I am perfectly prepared for that. Jump troops or teleporting troops uh, have the hotkey J on the hotkey uh, on the keyboard to jump or teleport. This is true 
no matter what factions you play, this is the standard hotkey for, for this ability. Can be useful to remember if you want to quickly jump troops. If you have multiple troops in your current selection that can jump, all of them will jump if they are in range. If you have, for example, come on, one um, assault marine, it's really easy. You press jump and you can jump over here. But if I have, let's say, another uh, assault marine selected here and I press jump and press it right on the edge, then this guy will not jump. So make sure you check double time if you have two squads that can jump that both have jumped. So you can make sure of that. The next hotkey is deep striking. I have already used it here with my terminators. If the terminators are in the, the barracks and there is a deep strike um, ability, it is always on E for all factions. For some of the newer factions, this sometimes uh, has the same hotkey as a building uh, upgrade or unit inside, but for the vanilla factions, that does not happen. So pressing E to uh, deep strike, I, I have it in my mind to eject the force, uh, the, the unit, so it's always E, very helpful. Something else, you can well, attach or deattach commander units breath. with this button, breath. or you can use T. Take and you tomorrow. can attach it, <coughs> and you press T again, it is deattached. Really helpful if you want to use quickly attaching or deattaching. Um, one thing I already yes, told you is the, the, the Q command, if the unit uh, moves and you want to stop it, you can press Q, it also uh, stops some, let's say, channeling abilities. So Q mostly used for buildings, uh, for for um, movement. Then you have different hotkeys for the stances. Uh, the, the stances, the, the first, let's say, uh, five stances for this combat are F1, F2, F3, F4 and F5. And then you have F6 or F7 for ranged or melee combat. For myself, I mostly use the F1 and F2 because they're really close to where I have my hand on the keyboard. Control groups I already explained to you is Control 1, Control 2, Control 3. Um, so you have them on different numbers, can have them on different numbers as well. If you have a big control group, let's say all of them, and I want, uh, I don't want to have the force command in this group, you can use Control, left click, and then he will leave this control group, then you can Press control group 2, control group, so he's not longer in this control group. Um, so you can you can also use that to uh, add a group to the current selection. Let's say, ah, oh, I want to have this spaceman in this group as well. So I can press control and left click, so I have this in this group. Then control 2 and I have all my space marines in the control group 2. Um, shift, I already explained that you can shift, um, use the command. Another thing that is important, um, if you have several units, you can click through here to see, ah, oh, okay, this unit does, does not have heavy weapons. But you can also use the tab key to quickly go through. Then you can say, oh, okay, this has, has none, and then it, this has no heavy weapons, so I click on it really fast. Tab. Um, then something, if you want to reinforce your squad, you can either use the R button. This will queue up si singular reinforcements. Or you can, or even for heavy weapons, you can use right click so it overwatches them and will start it as soon as you have enough resources or the, the, ne the, the action before has finished. So this has several benefits. A, you don't need to always have... Okay, my enemy loses here because I have the points. Lol. <laughs> um, I need to load this quickly again, sorry. Okay, here we are again. So back to the Overwatch, what it's called. If you right click something, you overwatch it. It has several benefits. A, you don't need to... Uh, it only starts if you have enough resources for it. So it does not... Um, you don't need to be... Uh, okay, I have 50 requisitions, now I click this once. And I have another 50 requisitions, so I click this once. And the other benefit is, let's say, if I queue all this up, this queues up 100... Uh, 175 and another 80 uh, resources I cannot use anywhere else. If I queue all this up manually, my resource bank is almost empty. But if I only um, overwatch it, I have the, the resources for the time being to use it to something else. Let's say build an armory or something. So overwatching can be beneficial. 
Uh, reinforce I already explained then B I already explained is for the opening the build menu for the advanced build menu it's N it's right next to B so it uh, can be used really uh, easily and um, something else that is really helpful is uh, E for repair um, mostly important if you have a building that can hold units like this one let's say oh I want to re repair my Opel relay right click on it uh, the unit will go inside and not repair if you want to repair it, you have to play, uh, use this ability, repair and then on this, if this would be damaged. Or you can press E, which is the hotkey for it. Um, space is, um, if you, for example, um, have a notification here, we are getting attacked, I have restored something, I have built something, there will be notification here, so you can press spacebar to move to it. Other units, uh, other commands to move to some squads or units is the uh, comma it's uh, move to the next um, idle unit so you have can jump through that I don't really use that but uh, what I do use because I have this this is also here um, is um, the dot move to the next builder unit so uh, where are my builder units I can you press dot and then you uh, move cycle through them um, problem is that if you click that too much, I think you select all your builders. If you double tap them, you select all your builders, which leads to um, sometimes un unwanted results. Okay, sometimes it does. Or if I double click this here, yeah, then I have them selected all together, which is not beneficial. And then, okay, I have now this not on my on my um, events list here, but. It's, capturing this point and then I would have pressed space but I would jump immediately to the out. point of interest. And the last one, uh, something that you most of the time should not use is the delete key. It kills a unit or building. It can be beneficial sometimes and it's even core of some uh, build orders is to delete some buildings. If you see the requisition here, it jumps a bit up because I deleted something that I get half of the requisition back, at least in the beginning, if I delete it right away. So it can be beneficial, but most of the times you do not want to do it. Just if you have something boxed in a vehicle that you want to get out, you sometimes use it. Or uh, late, late, late game for Necrons, you want to rebuild your generators because they are all decayed, you can delete them that way. Okay, that's all of the tips out of the way. Um, we will now jump into a game that I play live versus the AI, where you hopefully see all or most of the tips in action. It, it should be hopefully a quick game. So yeah, we will see you. I will see you in a second when we start the game. Okay, here we are, right before beginning a match. In, if you are playing uh, versus the computer, you always have time before starting the mission. In multiplayer, this is not the case. You need to be ready as soon as everybody has loaded. But here you can, in, uh, if you play versus the computer, you can go back to your mind and say, okay, what do I want to do again? Yes, I want to build my first building first. The build order I want to do is more or less a standard build order. I have for Space Marines that is um, getting one Space Marine squad out and a commander and then later add uh, one or two more Space Marines before going to tier two. Okay, so uh, if you are here, you can press spacebar to start the mission. Spacebar immediately press this, get this out. So I have all my stuff out. I press the F2 to have the right um, starting stance. Then I remember what, um, what, uh, Scouts. Things I want to cap first, I want to cap this, then I can use shift territory. commands to cap all the points I want to territory. may want to cap. I also want to build a generator near my listing post here. here. Yes, I used shift command to place also these. And then I use right click and shift so that both will move over to the plasma generators once they are finished here. I also use the sprouts to get the Space Marine squad to cap this point and then uh, later use my resources to build a force commander. Now this is more minor thing but I will leave one of them here and the second one will already start to build a listening post and then move over here. And once he is finished he should move over here and build a listening post over there. Marine squad deployed. 
the marine scrolls I immediately put in the command group 2 and make then shift Order command to move over here. I also changed the point of my barracks over here so that the force commander immediately moves over. A little misplay here, I could have uh, delayed building this listening post uh, after this one is finished so that my force commander would have already started and would not be delayed by uh, this 10 to 20 seconds. Make sure that he moves to this point after he's finished with that. So my marine squatters are on the way to the enemy and I can build my listening post here on the front first because these are, these are more in danger of being decapped by the enemy. You see once you have a few listening posts built already you can quickly start up to build the next one and the next one and the next one. So now I want to I press double two to come to my space marines and micro them again and then I think I want to upgrade this listening post because it protects my generator and this listening post because it protects the entrance of my base or this one because it is more at the front side. So we see that here he caps it so I make a stop command so that they just keep shooting and now I have my force commander I give him the control to one and give him the hold ground stance. And now I have enough resources to upgrade this listening post and build another listening post so it's all about the economy at the beginning and upgrade this listening post as well. So these are idle, I could either try to cap this or see if I can do some damage over here. I see that this is not um, taken so I decap it. Now would be the time that I add another marine squad so I press right click that it immediately starts, make sure to stop this at some point. Yes. After this I will maybe get another squad or a generator. I think I will get another squad. The enemy doesn't do much, which is interesting. I'll get another squad, so I have three fighting swords. Okay, here we are. Don't want to uh, cap this, I want to stay here and now I want to reinforce this as well. And he has a lot of lot of stuff, so I want to move out. But I have my second uh, marine squad on the field as well. Now I can make use of the, the um, what is it called Overwatch here, so that I have all the units as soon as possible. Stand here with my force commander and not move in because. Um, I don't want to get into melee with the Chaos Lord, really. So we see Raptor, so he has now a dedicated melee squad. We can engage with the Force Commander and then try to run back with the uh, Marines and shoot. We have enough resources. We should now stop reinforcing, so we have enough resources to... Um, this is my Thought Squad, so we have enough resources to uh, um, tech up soon. So he now has to cap this and we have time to shoot his heretics, his cultists, and then we will decap it again because we are evil bastards. Start capping um, and then upgrade another point I guess. I can now even move in a servitor here and now upgrade uh, this point. Use U for upgrade, this is a hotkey I will add as well. So these guards aren't, aren't busy doing anything, I can get in here, get them, get them over here. Um, while tier 2 is on the way I want to make sure to build an armory as well and then maybe add another generator. For the raptors here this is no good, they need to run away. So I want to make them cap instead of them. Move in, move in. So my broker is already here and can start to build a listening post, so this game is economically uh, in my favor already. Move him back because the enemy melee commander wants to engage. Make sure that all my squads are reinforcing here. Um, this is a match I cannot win, so I should move out. If I want to make sure he cannot focus fire my commander, I will just add him to a squad. I have the armory done, I get plasma pistols and I'm already almost here too so I can um, 
get plasma pistols as soon as I'm tier 2. Uh, sergeants with plasma pistols as soon as I'm tier 2. Next thing I want to attack to is from over here. And now in tier 2 I probably want to add or should add um, a machine code. And get another servitor out to build another generator. So I moved everything at once. You see how they move all very badly. So you sh that's why you should move them uh, separately. But now that I'm here, I get my sergeants out momentarily with plasma pistols, and this should be very good. Then I will get um, two squads with heavy bolters and one squad with missile launchers. And this should uh, spell disaster. I will build another power generator upgrade, not yet, and then I will get probably land speeders now that I think about it. Get my scouts ready here to move them in, not too close. I can position myself that I'm not in range of the listen post, but I am. So you see how I did that? I pushed them back and pressed Q so the listen post is not attacking me. If the AI would force attack me, uh, that would probably work. Um, land speeder Tempest. Cost 2, I need a cap upgrade, I need more power. But also can get some upgrades for my marines. They are now done doing that, so I get my capping units in here. And now I move in a bit to get some wish in. And now need to focus on the turrets, because turrets deal a lot of damage. Always focus them down. So, this is now my control group 3 and get crack missiles to kill um, buildings. But you see, this is basically one. And it is one because of a simple tier 1 aggression. Now, will I get more and more upgrades for my marines and uh, secure this? I can even add more marines and grenade launchers. I grenades. Bad position for one of those. Yeah, they should move back a bit. They should move forward a bit. More land speeders here. Stop making them then. Put another generator because I can. More space marines because why not? Put my builder. Yeah, you could have used the uh, dot. Yeah, now I just move in and stand under the enemy building site so that everything that is uh, getting built will immediately die. GG. More upgrades, because why not? I hope you have seen some some of the uh, points I have stated that you can do. So yeah, pretty pretty simple game against Chaos here. I play it was harder AI, not insane. Insane AI will get more resources, so you would need to grind a bit more to uh, for your benefits. But yeah, okay. Have yeah, some lonely raptors that just came in the wrong time and just die. Yeah, kill the HQ and then this is over. I might or might not add some more tips um, over the course uh, before releasing this video, so you might find some more tips or some more refined uh, explanation maybe for some tips in the list as well that will be in the l description a link to it as i stated before so i hope you learned something today and uh, hope that weren't too easy tips for you <laughs> but yeah that's that's um yeah some basic tips that you um, if you make sure you use them can immediately increase your performance playing dawn of war <laughs> Okay, as always guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye!